So we have completed the probability mass function of binomial distribution. Now let's have a look on the mean of the binomial distribution. We all know mean for binomial distribution is given as n into p. So for our example, if I have to find on an average how many patients survives out of 5 trial, we'll do n into p and that will give us 5 into 0 0.8, that's 4. This is the average number of people surviving if we use this medicine or test this medicine on 5 patients. Now this sounds intuitive that n into p is the average or mean formula for binomial distribution. But how much intuitive it sounds. We need concrete maths. How does it come to NP? Not anything else. We know that mean is the expected value, which can be written as the summation of probability of each possible outcome into the possible outcome. Say we are interested in finding the expected value of five trials. Then the possible number of successes is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And we know that we can find the probability of each successes as ncxp to the power x q to the power n minus x. Let's do the maths of summation of probability into outcome. And interestingly, it is coming to 4 again, which we were getting from n into p. So numerically, we proved that n into p will give the accurate answer, but as a true student of statistics, our curiosity should end when we get the actual mathematical proof, not just numerical one. And here it is. We'll start with the summation of probability into x. That is the expected value. And then we write the probability as the probability mass function of the binomial distribution, which we already derived. ncx p to the power x, q to the power n minus x. And after a few simple manipulation, we will get n into p, as you see on the screen. Similarly, for variance for binomial distribution, you can prove it in two ways. That the variance of binomial distribution is n into p into q. One numerically, and other with the pure mathematical proof. Numerically, for variance, we'll write variance of x as summation of probability into x minus n into p raised to the power 2, where n into p is the mean, therefore x minus n into p, where x varies from 0 to 5. And for each outcome, we have the probability. We have x, we have x minus np and we have x minus np square and if I calculate probability into x minus np whole square and then sum it, it will give us n into p into q again and that is 0 0.8. This was a numerical proof. For mathematical proof, start writing variance of x as expected value of x square minus expected value of x whole square and after a few manipulation you will get variance of x equal to n into p into q. Now the last and the most important puzzle that how binomial distribution, a discrete looking distribution converts itself into normal distribution. For that let's take this example only where we have 5 patients and the probability of success was 0.80. Now let's plot the probability of each successes which are possible. That is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. And with the help of formula ncx p to the power x q to the power n minus x, you will get the probability. So now instead of 5 patient, let's start increasing the trial to say 10, 20, 30 patient. And if you keep on increasing the number of trial, say n equal to 1000, then you will eventually find the normal distribution shape at the end. But here the probability of success was 0 0.80. Let's decrease the probability of success to say 0 0.10. And now start increasing the n again. And after increasing n significantly, you will again get normally distributed shaped curve. 
The only difference between the two curves is that the first curve will make the normal distribution around 800 on x-axis and other will make normal distribution around 100 as in more left side of the x-axis and the reason is that 100 and 800 are the mean of each example from the formula n into p. So that means that if you keep on increasing n then we will convert the binomial distribution into normal distribution. We have seen it visually and for detailed mathematical proof, you start with the probability mass function of binomial distribution and then limit n to infinity. Then you take a simple support of Stirling approximation, which is an approximation for factorial of a very large number, which says n factorial for a very large number tends to square root of 2 pi n into n upon e raised to the power n and after just few manipulation you will get the probability density function of normal distribution as you see on the screen and with this we have completed all the most important concept of the binomial distribution we understood the probability mass function we understood the mean we understood the variance and with that we have understood everything around binomial distribution. What is the probability mass function of binomial distribution? What is the mean? What is the variance of binomial distribution? And most importantly, we understood that how a discrete looking binomial distribution converts itself into normal distribution. With that, thank you. Have a nice day.